Welcome back, Christ followers. Let's talk. So, how did you do with your homework? Did you write down how you came to know Jesus? Did you write down exactly how he delivered you from your sin? If you did, I'd love it if you would share it down below. You know, being able to share your own personal testimony of what Jesus has done for you is something that many people, they have the story, but they've never put it to words. And writing it down makes it so solid. It makes it so important. It makes it so real that it's something that every single one of us should do as a Christ follower. In this session, we're going to talk a little bit about the Christian church and denominations. Um, in the previous sessions, we learned about the validity of Jesus as a man and that he died on a cross. We also learned about the validity of the Bible when compared with other historical texts, it actually stands up as a very accurate historical text. If we can agree on both of, that both of these things are true, would it be okay if we base our assumptions on these previous facts? Because in order to move forward, we need to be able to do that. So is it okay if we, if we kind of build on that a little bit? Is that all right? Great. So if you're new to your faith in Jesus, you'll soon find that there are many different churches uh, that refer to themselves as Christian churches. Uh, there's the Catholic Church, there's the Baptist Church, there's the Methodist Church, and the Presbyterian Church, just to name a few. And all of these churches profess to know Jesus, but they differ in their beliefs about certain aspects of God and what the Bible says. Now, as you probably noticed, I say Christian, I put it in parentheses like this. I don't mean to be demeaning to any particular denomination. I really don't. Um, but, you know, the word Christian didn't come along for many, many years. Up until that time, there were Christ followers, okay? So people who follow Christ are known as Christians. And the name Christian has become uh, a little bit uh, of a something that puts people off sometimes. So being a Christ follower is what I want to be known for. I want to be known as somebody who follows Christ and and knows Jesus. That's the, that's the litmus test I want to be held to. So the differences in, in these different denominations have resulted in some quarreling and dissension that has caused many to see Christianity as a divisive group that is not filled with love. And a lot of people say, hey, I don't want to be any part of that. There are beliefs that are open for discussion when it comes to interpreting the Bible. But there are a few that are essential to salvation and a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, and His Son, Jesus Christ. These are what I like to call the core beliefs of being a Christ follower. The first belief is that Jesus is the Son of God and that no one can experience eternal life in heaven without accepting His sacrificial gift that He offers to us through His death on the cross, His burial, and most importantly, his resurrection on the third day. This fact is confirmed by Jesus himself in John 14, 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Could Jesus have been any more clear? Then John also confirms this in John 3:16. And he confirms that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came so that we could make a choice. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, that's John 3, 16. And if you've been watching any kind of sports uh, over the last, I don't know, 100 years probably, there's a sign up that says John 3.16. So we see that, you look it up, and you read John 3.16. But what they leave out a lot of times is John 3.17, which is one of my favorite verses, because it goes on to explain that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But then it goes on to say in John 17, it says, or 3.17, it says, 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in is condemned already because he has not believed in the one and only Son of God. So guys, God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world. He sent Jesus so that we could make a very educated decision about our future. Some people say that, oh, if there's only one way, how unfair is that? My goodness, isn't it nice to have clarification? Isn't it nice that there is one way that you can be sure? Oh my goodness, our God is an awesome God, isn't he? I love him. I don't think salvation could be made any more clear, do you? So, the most important part about salvation is that you have faith that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for you. This is called the gospel message. And gospel literally means good news. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus is so simple that even a small child can understand the love that Jesus has for you and what he did to redeem you and to offer you forgiveness for your sin so that you could have eternal life in heaven with him. Now, here's a little test for you. How do you know you're one of his children? How do you know your decision was real? How do you know you're saved? Well, believing in Jesus is not a head thing. Knowing the facts and believing them is not what John meant when he wrote John 3.16. It's also not a feeling. It's not something that you feel for a moment and then it's all over. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. So it is by faith, my friends. It is by faith. It's not by anything you do. It's not by the logic of it all. It's not by that, that feeling that I got in my belly. No, it's, it's by faith, okay? It's by faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When the head and the heart meet, faith begins. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 16 through 20, you will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. Hmm. So, how do we know if we're saved? We're bearing good fruit. We're loving Jesus. We're sharing love with others. Now, we're gonna go back to what I said in the very beginning of this entire session. It's all about the relationship. If you truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for you, and that you are saved by his grace, then you will bear good fruit and you'll want to get to know him better. Doesn't that stand to reason? Doesn't that make sense? And that's the second core belief that we must have. If we believe in Jesus as our Savior, then we are to become his disciple and learn to follow him and trust him. If you remember the prayer I prayed with you back on episode three, we become a disciple of Jesus by repenting of our sin, confessing it to Jesus, and then by being baptized. 
You see, the last thing that Jesus told us to do before he ascended into heaven in Matthew 28, 18 through 20 was this. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. In order to be a disciple of Jesus, we must follow his teaching. He commanded us to go and baptize people in his name and teach them to obey all he has taught us. This is referred to as the Great Commission, and it is what every one of us is called to do. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your skill set. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you speak well, whether you don't speak well. Our job is to just go and tell people about what Jesus has done for us and let him take it from there. Just as he knocked on your heart and you invited him in, he will do the same for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't save people. We just share our story. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He does all the work. We're just required to do what he asks, which is go tell people, baptize them in his name, and then teach them what they need to know so that they can do the same thing. We are to surrender our life to follow the one true king, Jesus. And he wants to have a personal relationship and friendship with you. Wow. Wow. Listen, here's the cool part. It doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't matter that this is a really thick book and that you don't have everything memorized in here and you don't know every single story or, or how it relates to Jesus. It's okay that you don't know that. I don't think that we will ever know that until we die. But here's the cool part. Jesus will show you how. Jesus will show you how. He lives inside you, and all he requires is obedience. You just have to be willing. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Our God is so amazing. So, are we clear on our core beliefs? Are we clear on these core beliefs? If we can all agree on these points, then we can be the church that Jesus wants us to be. So in the next episode, we will discuss what I feel is the greatest lie that Satan has ever told and how it is continuing to deceive us to this day. See you on the next episode.